All right, so Facebook logged us out, so we're just going to keep rolling with that now on, on a part two here on Facebook. It freaking logged us out. I don't know what's up with that. So anyway, back that, that to me is the winner. The team that lost that race, they won. They fucking won. Like, what does a win look like to you? The push-up challenge was a win to me. The amount of shit that was accomplished in that time. The amount of reading I did. The amount of online courses I did. The work I got done, planned out the whole week. The emails that I wrote. Or tons of emails, literally. In a minute, a minute's time, because the clock buzzer would go off every minute. Sitting there, send out a text message to a, a client. Do a set of push-ups. Send out a text message to a, a prospect. Do a push-up. Start writing an email. Get the first sentence down. Do a set of push-ups. Get three sentences down. Do, and, you're, and it's just laser beam fucking focused. Like you wouldn't believe, even though you know that bell is coming. It's fucking laser beam focused. Crazy. Crazy. The last two hours of the push-ups was more than the previous 10 that's how many. Just from the breakdown to breakthrough. Once you get over that, I don't give a fuck factor. I don't care that my elbows hurt. Like, it's just pain. Sure, they're not moving, really. They won't move. There's no literally nothing left in the muscle, in the joint. But it's just fucking pain. Pain is a sign you're fucking alive, motherfucker. It's a sign you're alive. Fucking live. It's breakdown to breakthrough. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. That, the, the, the suffering makes you let your guard down. So you're more vulnerable. You're more open to the fucking universe sending you these signals. So you're not like blowing shit off. That's what it's about. They say fatigue makes a coward of us all. But it also, when you're focused and disciplined and have the right type of vision and mindset, that suffering will lead to fatigue. It'll make you start getting fatigued. But you, they, they call it a second wind for a reason. It's fucking there. That second wind comes from the universe. I don't know how to explain all that shit. But that's where it comes from. It's when you find out who you really are. When you're down and out and injured. And no one is watching. And you're all fucking alone. You're forced to use guile and wits and brain. And a different level of mind power. You're forced to take all the different faculties of your body and, and every part of your body and every muscle. That's why my fucking ankles, my calves, my glutes were all sore. You're forced to take every bit part of your body and focus it into one effort. One fucking push-up or one thought. You're forced to think differently, to approach it differently, have a different perspective. It's beyond flow. Subconscious power cannot tap into that stuff on your own. You can't. That connection with the fucking universe. Oh, well, I'm not a tree-hugging fucking whatever Hippie motherfucker, but there's something to that. When you go to that next level, and you're connecting with something else out there. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's either death or something. Hell, I don't even know. The universe. It's the ultimate form of self-expression. Ultimate form of vulnerability. But you know what it really is? Because it's breaking down all the bullshit barriers around you. It's the real fucking you. That's what it is. It's when you get a chance to stand up and stand out and go that extra fucking mile. That's what it is. It's all, and we say it all the time, just do hard shit in the project, in the project. We call it just project that shit. Project that shit. That's what we say. That's what we do. Do stuff, do stuff so fucking ridiculous that people think you're lying. Every weekend, every Monday, the kids go back to school and they talk about their weekends to their teachers. They talk about their weekend to the teachers and the teachers just look at them like, okay, whatever. They just think their kid's lying when they start telling them the fucking weird shit that they did the, on the weekend. Like, yeah, sure you did, Tyson. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you rode 120 miles on your bike. Sure, Midge. I'm sure you hiked the hardest mountain in California and, and it took you 15 hours. I'm sure you did it, kid. Yeah, sure you did. Good job. Oh, I'm sure you stood up, stayed up all night and did fucking push-ups all weekend. Sure you did. They just think you're a liar. And let me tell you something about the teacher. I'm not going to say what teacher, what school, nothing, because whatever. I heard that a kid did 24 hours of push-ups. He went to school, told his teacher, and first his teacher said, really? Did you really do that? Like thinking he's lying. Then the teacher said, do you even like doing that kind of stuff? Like trying to convince him that it's he shouldn't do it, he shouldn't like it. And he said, of course I do. I love it. It's freaking awesome. She's like, oh, I would rather sit on the couch eating ice cream, watching Netflix. That's what the teacher told this kid. I heard, I heard. That's what the teacher told this kid in school, in front of an entire class. So now this whole class is hearing their teacher, who's their role model, their teacher. That's one teaching them that 
you should rather watch motherfucking Netflix and shoving fucking ice cream in your pie hole because do you really like doing push-ups? Do you really like that stuff? Like, what the fuck? What the flying fuck? Anyway, we're going to get off that topic before I have to end up homeschooling the kids because they're not allowed in any school in fucking Orange County. Anyway, do, do stuff do stuff that's so fucking stupid that people think you're lying. Do people think you're lying? You don't even give a fuck. You don't need to prove it to no one. Fuck them. You proved it to yourself. You're already connected to the universe through your suffering. Make hard your new easy. Then go search for a new fucking hard and do that shit until that becomes easy. And just repeat and repeat and repeat. This is what we do on a regular basis. This is what the project graduates do on a regular basis. This is what the freak family do on a regular basis. This is why we started these monthly challenges. Wait till you see the shit that's coming up. Wait till you see the ridiculous shit that's coming up. I can't wait till that ice cream eating fucking teacher. Here's some of the shit that's coming up for the rest of this year. We have stuff planned out for every month. We have so much stuff planned out and it's so exciting. Like thinking about, fuck, I don't want to wait till October, November to do that challenge. We might have to do two of them in a single month. We might have to do two in a month. Who's in there? Michael Marsh. Programming is fine. Yes, Michael Marsh is a savage that just graduated the project and gave a very generous donation to the push-up, 24-hour push-up challenge. Thank you again. We appreciate that. Awesome. Freaking helping out with the big brothers, big sisters. So do stuff, again, on, a, on such a regular basis, making that, that hard stuff. Do that, that suffering, suffering becomes a superpower. It's fucking crazy. It takes you to some different level, some out-of-fucking-world experience. Will I die one day doing something stupid? I don't know. Maybe. Might. I'd rather die getting better than die sitting on a motherfucking couch eating Netflix, whatever the fuck it is, eating ice cream and watching Netflix. I'd rather die going on some crazy ass hike and falling off a cliff. That's what I'd rather do. I don't want it to happen. I'd rather that than sitting on a fucking couch eating fucking ice cream. You suffering as a superpower. As a mother, fucking superpower. Adversity, hardship, brutal, relentless. Make that shit normal to you. Part of the game. That's what's going on in these push-ups. Shit was fucking brutal. This shit is still sore chest. And you know what we did the next day? You know what we did the next day? You know what we did? We finished it. The whole freak family drove to the motherfucking gym to go lift some damn weights. Monday morning, bright and early. Lifting some damn weights. We weren't light on the chest press. We're going smart. But listen, some damn weights. We didn't do any damn push-ups, I'll tell you that. I still haven't done any push-ups. I don't even know if I could do a push-up right now. Michael Marsh, yes. Thank you for the help. What's the morning ritual to get the first win of the day? Well, my morning ritual is very long and detailed, but I can tell you, I mean, I can tell you all about it. We could break it down. We can even do a whole separate episode on that. I just see a question about the morning ritual. But the morning ritual, think of, don't, I can tell you what my morning ritual is and you can hear 10 different experts or whatever and high level uh, achievers, much more successful. And they'll all tell you their morning routines and they'll all probably be something similar, something's different. What you need to do is find out what's going to work for you to give you, to make you be available, the availability, the ability to attack the fucking day. That's what it is. What are you going to do to set yourself up for success for the day? For you personally. For me, I have a, uh, some things in the morning I'll do. It's, it's hydrating, eating. I'm taking care of my mind, my body, and then the business. Literally in that order. Literally in that order. And body just meaning fueling it, getting the blood flowing a little bit, not even doing a workout. I won't do my workout until after I got my main portion of work done for the day. That just works for me. Some people need to work out first in the morning to get their body moving so they can work better and think better. That works for them. And I have coaching clients, private one-on-one coaching clients, and I coach them differently depending on what works for them. So some of them I recommend one thing, some the other thing. We really need to break down your day, break down your sleep, your habits, your, your exercise, your routine, and Literally structure the day. I'll tell you this. My day is specifically structured from the second I wake up to the second I go to sleep. Like right now, it's 6.40 p.m. here in California. I've had this energy since the second my fucking feet hit the ground of the cave when I woke up. Because the day is structured specifically to maintain fucking energy. My discipline and my energy, that is the structure to get the win of the day. The discipline, the first win of the day, is getting the fuck up right away when the feet hit the floor... And just telling myself, I am fucking awesome. That's what I'll do the first day. 
Then I'll tell myself, I'm going to attack this day with discipline, energy, confidence, action, and be my freak motherfucking self. That's what I tell myself. And then I say, I'm going to create, I'm going to connect, and I'm going to close this fucking world today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make no excuses, and I'm going to kill, kill, kill. Kill the day. I'm going to kill fear, kill doubt, fear, kill procrastination. Kill the little bitch inside me. I'm going to kill this day. That's my first win is getting that discipline to get up with that mindset and ride that wave. And then the schedule is intentionally broken down throughout the day to make all that happen. So morning ritual is different for everyone. We can talk on the side and really break it down what would work best for you. All right. So let's keep rolling. Let's finish this up. And let me tell you, back back into that whole mindset of suffering and, and, and get reaching that different level. Listen, you, you're, the power of your mind is, is an irresistible force with no limitations, zero fucking limitations, except those that you put on yourself by yourself. That's it. Nothing else can stop that power of your mind. That, and that's the only reason I was doing these fucking push-ups. And I know it's something so stupid as push-ups. It's not some big hero story, but this is what we're talking about. So... Because I get stupid comments all the time, so fuck you. Anyway, so no one can do this stuff for you. It must be acquired by yourself. Some things you cannot delegate. You cannot delegate a, a positive mindset. You can't delegate your discipline. You can't delegate your energy that you're bringing into the world. Your thoughts, your judgments, your reactions, you fucking control. You wouldn't let another human or situation control you and dominate you physically. So why the fuck you let people do it to you mentally and emotionally? Cut the fucking puppet strings. Take the power back. Take complete control of your mind back. It's it's the only way to connect to the freaking, that universe, to get to that next level. Break through that fucking magical portal of suffering. Embrace it. Look for the suffering. Go mining for pain. Mining for suffering. Like a gold miner. Except you're not looking for gold. You're looking for suffering. What's the next hard shit I can do? What's the next... Problem I can attack. There's no such thing as problems. All there are are situations that need a badass motherfucker like you to come in with a solution. That's all a problem is. That's all it is. But w- with control of your own mind, you're connected to the to this universe. There goes Facebook again. Fucking Facebook. Session expired. Please log in again.